Now, uh, let us talk royals. We don't do it as often as we used to uh, because Harry and Meghan have gone a bit quiet lately. Uh, although what I can say to you is that the one thing that the BBC is watched for uh, is uh, the big royal occasion because the two biggest uh, audiences they got in the last year were one for the Queen's funeral and two uh, for the uh, coronation of King Charles. But we're now about to talk to a man who knows a lot about the royals. He is, of course, the one and only Mr Rupert Bell. I have to ask you, Rupert, are you actually Rupert Bell or are you a man in a Rupert Bell suit? Um, I'd like to think I'm the real Rupert Bell in my own <laughs> suit. Um, so I am who I say I am. Good man. So, uh, if if buts or maybes, Mike. Yes. Now, um, I'm delighted to be able to talk to you about Harry and Meghan because you know how, how we like to talk about them as we're often accused of talking about them endlessly. We don't talk about them that much because they've been quite quiet. I mean, ever since Harry sort of lost his case against uh, news group newspapers and made basically uh, his, his accusations of phone hacking were thrown out, um, he hasn't done very much. And there's been a lot of rumours flying around that things are not going too well for them. Well, I think it's quite clear on a business front, things aren't going well for them. You know, obviously this Spotify uh, deal that was cancelled, which they now say, will allegedly say, that they weren't given enough help by Spotify to keep it going. And, uh, you know, they were not, you know, as a result, they felt let down by Spotify. So it seems like they're trying to blame Spotify for cancelling it, uh, rather than maybe their ideas didn't fit with the way Spotify wanted to go or whatever. Mm. So we're, we're not sure. So it's... A bit of he said this and he, she said that and whatever. So you're never quite sure. Now they've gone and produced a video from their garden, a two-minute video, and it's it's very interesting to see the sort of PR sort of spin on this. And you saw last week with William doing his video about his Earthshot uh, prize and all the things that he's doing there. Now we see um, Harry uh, and Meghan sitting in their garden talking to various people who are helping the, with their charity foundation in trying to help the sort of protect people on the internet mm. um, and I have to say the one takeaway line for it from me was the one Harry said our children are very proud of what you're doing yeah well there must be very bright two-year-olds a, a two-year-old and a four-year-old so I'm not I think he may have got that slightly wrong and I, you know again that yeah. just doesn't well, reflect she, on well, very well she adds I think well they don't know it yet which pretty much yeah. sums up the way that they talk about each other doesn't it because they don't know how they're going to react to things until somebody tells them how to react to it but also um, it seems to me that this kind of loving that they're showing and sharing uh, talking to people on the phone uh, is more than uh, they're hoping to do to prove to everybody that everything's fine in the in the world of Harry and Meghan because others in America have been hinting that, that things are not as well in their relationship uh, as perhaps people would think. I, I think that it, presumably from a sort of business point of view, there are stresses and strains uh, for their, uh, their, from a business perspective, which perhaps as they are working together and they're trying to create their new life, will create difficulties. I think we have to sort of try and understand the dynamic here. Look, clearly, we people would be hoping that the marriage is, is perfectly sound and that everything in the garden in Montecito is, in Montecito is rosy. So, um, but clearly, the rumours that are out there are, are obviously um, in probably... They're trying to put those to bed. Now, we've seen this happen many times through the years, and we hope that they are living a happy life for the sake of the children mm. and for, for Harry. But... They do seem at the moment to be ploughing a, a lone furrow on all fronts. And it's, it's quite tough for them, I'm sure. But this was a, clearly a PR example. It's a heavy, ed, heavily edited film and clearly staged, managed very deliberately with people on the phone. Just like, to some extent, just like Williams last week was, you know, well staged, managed, well put together, trying to tap into a certain zeitgeist. So you can see the sort of PR machines of both teams were wheeling away at the moment, but it always at the moment seems like the uh, Harry and Meghan one are on the back foot, mm. whereas William's team and Catherine's teams are much more on the front foot trying to uh, drive the agenda, whereas Harry and Meghan, you feel like, are trying to make sure they're not forgotten yeah. and, and become irrelevant to, the, to whatever's going on. Yes, indeed. Maybe too late for that. Let's have a look at the clip uh, right now.
Hello, this is Tazeen. Hi, Tazeen. Hi, Tazeen. Hi. Congratulations, this is great, and we're so happy to have you as part of this team. Really, thank you for all the work you're doing. It's huge, it's making an enormous impact. This is amazing. This is exactly why we do what we do. This is exactly why the Youth Power Fund was created. Thank you for doing everything that you do. Our kids especially are incredibly grateful. <laughs> um, they don't know it yet. They don't know it yet. But they but will. So good to talk to you. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thanks, have a good Take one. Care, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so fake. I don't. I mean, if, if 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 it's meant to be genuine, right? If somebody calls you up and it's Harry and Meghan on the phone, do you think one of the, Meghan would have said, "Oh, hi, it's Meghan Markle here"? I mean, even if you're stunting it up, you're supposed to make it look like it's real. She obviously knows who's calling, so when they call, she doesn't ask who it is because she knows already. It's it's cheesy. Um, there's no two other ways to describe it. Look, I'm sure what the, the heart of what it's trying to do, everyone protecting children and people on the internet, is a very worthy uh, thing to be involved with. No one is disputing that. It's just the sort of desperate need to be seen to be that everyone's happy that yeah. they're doing it. Now, right. I, look, they are in a position to get sponsorship, to get funding, and that's what but that is the frustrating thing. And they would be able to do that if they were still in the royal family. And in fact, probably, just like William is able to do with his Earthshot foundations, companies are very pleased and willing to be associated with him. But at the moment, the uh, Sussex's brand is somewhat tarnished and, and people are, are less keen to get involved at the moment until they start to see them turn around the narrative from being one of sort of whinging mm. about things particularly the royal family to actually starting to be positive and that's why we are likely to see harry going out on his own the invictus games they'll be going to that in september in dusseldorf so that's a chance for him to get on the front foot and to drive the narrative his way and something like the invictus games is something that we know he has been instrumental in driving forward and has a, played a huge part in the success of that. Yeah. And I wish him well with the Invictus Games coming up in September, and I hope he is able to be as proactive and committed and drive the interest in that uh, as he has done in previous years, and people can just leave him to get on and support that and mm. do a good job there. Wasn't he meant to be making some kind of documentary about the Invictus Games? Because I think the last time he was here... Uh, or at least one of the times he was here, I think it might have even been the time uh, when the Queen passed away. Was he not over in Holland or Germany or somewhere with Meghan uh, making some kind of documentary? Yeah, they are making one, and I believe that might be the next series, but it's, it's going to be good. There'll be some, lots of interesting stories within that, and there are some great human interest stories about people who have been injured in conflicts and how they've tried to rebuild their lives. There's some great stories there, and that's why... I've got nothing but admiration for him starting that back in the day and getting it going and driving forward. And I hope I wish the documentary well, but it's it's not necessarily going to be the big draw for people to watching it. The, okay, the Netflix uh, documentary attracted huge interest, but that was because you know that, that there was the publicity behind it, and obviously the you know what were they going to say? But the Invictus ones sounds more standard although of course i think the stories will be interesting but how big an audience it will get will be will remain to be seen yeah i mean i think people are just tired of it really uh, they're just tired of all the virtue signaling tired of all the lovey-dovey nonsense tired of all the sniping and in the end as piers morgan says if all you do uh, is get famous for trashing your own family both of them by the way uh, then what is what is, what is left for you? you you've actually got to move the story on you've actually got to say well You've created your new life. Be happy with your lot and drive it forward and don't actually look at endlessly um, producing new swipes at your um, uh, family. And obviously, there's likely to be a, doc a book coming out written by Omid Scobie, yeah, which great. is going to reveal again, we'll have their side of the story, but it will probably be having a pop at the royal family and they'll say, this is the real story because yeah. you won't hear it from the royal family well the royal family don't say anything that's the whole point they yeah. they shut up they just get on with things but unfortunately that's what we're likely to see uh in in november there will be more revelations coming out in this book whether true 
whatever. I don't know, but we'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah. But they've got well, people to stop in America. Sniping, I yeah. Think. yeah. Also, people in America, and they've also got to stop complaining. People in America are sick to death of watching these pair. Um, you know, as they struggle to buy their, you know, groceries at, at the big Y, and as they struggle to fill their uh, cars up uh, with with petrol. You know, they're looking at them, going, "Hang on, you're saying your life is, has been awful. You know, you've got millions of pounds in the bank. Uh, you've got two beautiful kids. You've got a lovely mansion in Montecito, down the road from um, Ellen DeGeneres. What have you got to complain about?" Well, that is it. I think that's what leaves people going. Come on, move on, enjoy your life now for what you've got. You've chosen this path. Then look as if you're actually enjoying it, rather than being a burden to yeah. all and sundry and saying, Every "Woe is me." Because ultimately, they're living in this lovely house. They've got the life they wanted. Then I think everyone was saying, "Well, this is fantastic. Let's enjoy it." But at the moment, for the Sussexes, it feels like everything's a, a struggle to be seen to be having fun. Uh, or you know, it's nothing wrong with that. They've chosen a lifestyle. They can afford to do it. Get on with it. Enjoy it. And then perhaps we will start to give them the support that they are craving for mm. down the line. Absolutely right. Now, there's been a bit of a noise in the background. I can reveal that exclusively that you are down at Glorious Goodwood, I take it, right? I, I am. At, it wasn't very glorious yesterday, <laughs> but luckily the sun is out. Um, and the Sussex dances. I'm, I, I'm not. This is the Sussexes I want to talk about. Yes. Um, because, well done. Uh, I'm on the I'm on the Sussex downs, um, and ready for a fabulous day's racing, uh, because I'll be commentating on Tall Sport later on uh, with some of the big races yeah. today. But this is one of the beautiful parts of uh, the English countryside. And yesterday it was very unglorious. Today. It is glorious and a great place to be. Yes. Uh, heavy going, would you say, today for the horses? Uh, uh, soft going, drying out all the time. Bit of a wind, playing havoc with my hair. I haven't got as much uh, hairspray in it as you've got, Mike. So uh, that's why you my see, hair's You can't resist, around. can you? You cannot resist. <laughs> Yet again, un uh, an unnecessary roughness, yellow flag on the play. You know, thank you very much indeed. Rupert Bell uh, reporting in from Glorious Goodwood. The Sussexes that he wants to talk about. Very wise as well.